The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said that nearly 45% of completed registration in the ongoing continuous voters registration exercise nationwide are invalid. The chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, said the invalid registration emanated from voters' re-registration as well as incomplete dates of registration of registrants, which did not meet the commission's business rule for inclusion in the, in the register. According to INEC boss, investigations into the worrisome developments are going on. An indicted person from both the commission and amongst the public may face prosecution in line with the Electoral Act. Let us look at this implication and, uh, and all that, that concerns this and to join, joining us to provide uh, enlightenment and education around this issue is no other than uh, a friend of the house, an experienced analyst with deep insight and knowledge about the election, uh, Mr. Jide Ojo, who is here with us uh, in the studio. You're welcome again, sir. Thank you for you're having me. You're beginning to look I'm, like this. Happy Good Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all Nigeria, actually. Yes, indeed. And I mm. like the Ishago and... Uh, Mm. Uh, but you did not um, give us your your Igbo title, so that we oh. add, would have added the one. As a rock by you one. As a rock by you. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, uh, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. The 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 closure of the the CVR is anywhere in, in a month or two, mm -hmm. and we are just getting this um, this update around over a million invalid invalid um, uh, registration, and you begin to wonder: Is it the time to have? you know, brought this information to the fore. Shouldn't it have happened uh, a bit earlier? What is the implication for these individuals who have made the effort to show up at these CVR centers to get themselves registered? Thank you very much. Uh, happy Good Friday to Christian brothers and Muslims. Uh, happy Ramadan. Um, first, I want to condole with the Independent National Electoral Commission on the sad news. Uh, broke yesterday in Imo State, mm -hmm. where one of their registration officers were, okay. was gone down by unknown no male or unknown no gone male, and uh, two others are unaccounted for. Uh, as at yesterday, we hope they will be found alive. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a civic exercise mm -hmm. that should not be bloody. This is not about money sharing. This mm -hmm. is about you know national assignment. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what grouse those who went to kill that young man, Wokore, uh, what grouse they have to settle with him or with the institution. Mm. Recall that um, over 40 INEC offices have been taught uh, sure. in the last one year uh, ahead of November 6, uh, 2021, number election. That aside, um, when this information came out on Wednesday, I was taken aback. Uh, for the good reasons that 45% uh, is huge. Mm. And I wonder whether INEC did sufficient voter education. Mm. Uh, if they did, this shouldn't have happened. Because ignorance is a bliss. Mm. And when I read the text, I saw that quite a number of people who re-registered shouldn't have done so. Hmm. But unfortunately, too, our political class is not helping matter. You recall that about two months ago, we have one of the APC leaders making an open claim that INEC uh, voters register PVC has expired. The commission came out to say the PVC does members. not expire. But having said that, Let's, let's look at, uh, you, you, you had a very good question. From what I read, the ABIS, that's Automated Biometric uh, Identification System, it, it used to be AFIS, mm. that's Automated Fingerprint Identification System. But now what they are using, what ANEC is using is ABIS, mm. which according to them is more sophisticated than AFIS. Because when you say FIS is automated fingerprint right. identification system, but now they are using automated biometric identification system, which has the capacity to cross match your mm. face mm. and your Special fingerprint. Right. Now, the registrants that they deployed this solution on were those who registered between June 2021 and December 20, 2021. 
So, you know this thing is running on over 84 million registrants. Mm. 84 million who were registered as at 2019. They now have to cross match their fingerprints and their facials mm. against those 84 million to know if any of them had previously yeah, registered. registered. Mm. So it's a cumbersome process, nonstop, for you to do cross matching across 84, 84 million. million other yeah. registrants. Mm. Because what they are doing is to identify this fingerprint and this face as it been on our so. database previously. If it is not, then it's, it allows okay. your registration. If it does, it flags your registration. And that's what happened. Now, what are the root causes? First, people felt they registered way back in 2011 or in all the other CVR that had been held. And they possibly are no longer living where they used to. And because of the cumbersome nature of having to do transfer mm. of their registration details. So, like, if you are formerly working in Lagos, you register at Etios, a local government, in a polling unit there. You are now working in Abuja. Instead of you to apply to the electoral officer or the resident electoral commissioner in Lagos to transfer your registration details to Abuja, where you now work and live, they will just go and register afresh. Mm. Now, this ABs will not be able to detect at that point because they are not running it uh, simultaneously as the registration is going on. Mm. I don't know if you get my yes. drift. It's only when they have concluded for a quarter, they will now take all the registrants and synchronize and, and, synchronize and cross match them. This takes a while. So I do mean that it's, an, or it's, a, it's, it's a fast process where as you are registering on that laptop or that the verification, uh, the, the verification can also be done cross matching but that technology maybe is not yet available mm -hmm. but yes. the bottom line is that why should those who have registered previously now go and register again mm -hmm. one the business the political class who wants to take advantage like i next said some of them even against all voter education don't do this they want to is a lie. Mm. Uh, they can't find out. They won't know. Mm. But what they didn't bargain for is that there is a technology that can actually identify if you have previously no registered mm. and cross match. And what that does is that it flags. And when it flags, the consequence is that your second registration is invalid, mm. but your first registration is valid. You mm. can still vote. But what you have committed is a criminal okay. offense for which you can uh, okay. go for one year imprisonment mm -hmm. or 100,000 fine, according to Section 23 of the Electoral 2022. Mm -hmm. People did not know it's a crime. Mm -hmm. There is a serving governor in one of the North Central states mm -hmm. that I next some years ago revealed had multiple registration, had mm -hmm. dual registration, registered in, in Abuja and went to register in his state capital mm -hmm. again. Mm. And Anna was threatening as a data that it was going to prosecute that. Mm. So if political leaders are found culpable, when they could easily have asked, because they, there are categories of people that this CVR is meant for. Mm. People who are 18 years and above, mm -hmm. who have not previously registered. Who just attained 18. Who just attained 18. Then it's an opportunity for you to get a new PVC in the event that the previous one you had is defaced, damaged, or lost. But that is not to say you go and register afresh. You just apply to say, my PVC is lost or is damaged, is defaced, I want it. Then those who have reasons to correct any of their registration details, maybe your name was wrongfully spelled, these are a category of people who don't have to go and register but who can lay complaints for corrections on their names or to uh, ask for transfer of their previous registration details. Then that is one. The other category that has made this uh, registration invalid are those who did not complete the process. So they started online pre-registration. This is the first time mm. ANEC is doing online pre-registration. Mm. 
They possibly got to the INEC office. They did certain level of registration, but maybe the system broke down. They couldn't capture their facial or their fingerprint. fingerprint. And they said, please come back on so so day to come around complete. Mm -hmm. You now refuse to show. Of course, it will flag it as if you have registered. But because you have not concluded, because what INEC is doing now is dual, uh, dual biometrics, mm. fingerprint and facial. So if you do only fingerprint and you didn't do facial, it's incomplete registration. Mm. Well, with all of this, it seems um, there, is, there isn't much education you know, about this in the public space. A lot of people don't. And I've challenged INEC over this. The last stakeholder meeting they had with civil society and media and other, because they have this quarterly meeting. And I told them, there isn't sufficient voter education around this issue. Only a few of us who are close to the commission, who receive regular um, statements, you know, because they have, they have a platform. Um, there is what is called INEC News Bulletin, which <laughs> circulates every day. Mm -hmm. And some of us are enlisted on that platform. So we are on top of information about, but okay, I'm doing PR for you. I'm not your staff. I don't get paid by you. I don't do anything. If you didn't invite me here, I will not be saying what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Do you get? But those who have that onerous responsibility, how much of that are they doing? And who are the people? Even the political class themselves. Political parties should not abandon it to INEC and say it's INEC's responsibility. Because they are primary beneficiaries. They are the ones that will, that will sponsor candidates. And I should have expected that they will organize town hall meetings. Mm. There's nothing that says all the 18 registered political parties should not organize town hall meetings for their members. Or even for the general public. What, what is wrong if APC hired International Conference Center and said, today we are, what we are doing is voter sensitization, mm. and invited the general public and invited people from INEC, voter, uh, and public, uh, voter education and publicity department to come and enlighten them mm. on what this is all about. Right. That we hate public education. The same thing with National Orientation Agency. The same thing with the media and civil society. All of us are stakeholders in this. But when you live, okay, look at the number of, share number of, private radio and TV stations in Nigeria. If INEC were to sponsor jingles across, it would need how many billions? Because for, for 30 seconds jingle, you know what, you, you are also in the media space. So there are too many. I was surprised when somebody said there are 30 radio stations in Abuja alone, 30. In Lagos, maybe it's about 100. And now Kano, Portacourt, you know, and rivers and all of that. So what we are saying is that INEC may not have the wherewithal to do an intensive and sustained voter education around the severe. Mm. But the stakeholders can help out. And like I said, it's a challenge to the political parties themselves and the contestants. All these presidential aspirants, there is nothing criminal if they decide to organize standard meetings and dedicate part of that town hall meeting where they want to sell the idea to say, we have with us someone from the Voter Education Department of INEC who will enlighten us. What is this CVR all about? Mm. Who, who are the people? Because this is not a national registration exercise. True. Right. The last one was held in 2011. All the one we have been holding in the last 11 years are CVR, mm. continuous yeah, voter, voter registration, registration, which is not meant for everybody. Mm. It is targeted. But people are looking for shortcuts, the easy way out. Oh, I can't, I can't be writing. I don't even know who to write to if I want to change my registration details. So it's better I just, it should be it's by my side, by my house, by my office. Let me go and do fresh registration. Yeah. What these yeah. people did not know is that it's just that they were lucky by the sheer number, over one million. Because we need to also understand that the inv this invalid registration mm. is not against the entire registration since 2011. Mm. This is against mm. under the current CVR. Mm. Okay. Which we is, must, we which must is also not scare people. Mm. There is already 84 million Cleaned that up. doesn't have issue. issue. Okay. So with this data now that we have, is it going to have any impact on elections? Of course it will. It will to the extent that this 45 
is 44.6 percent of the new registrants will not or may not have opportunity mm. to participate in non coming election. Mm. Because, for instance, in Ekiti Anoshun, I'm not sure there will even be continuous, continuous voter registration for the reasons that the law says INEC has to end um, registration on a particular day. It used to be 60 days to election. Mm -hmm. Now I think it's been raised to 150 days yes. to election, yeah. which is why INEC is telling all of us now that by June, yes, they are right. going to end. Mm -hmm. Because this will give them ample opportunity to run these ABs mm -hmm. and also to distribute. Because it, it, you see, I, I, having a PVC is not an end in itself. Mm -hmm. It is a means to an end. And what is that means to an end? It is to help INEC now to do batching mm. of voters. You remember, one of the issues I pick up with INEC, which I've also made known to them, is that this issue of zero polling unit, mm. a polling unit having no voter, mm. or having one voter, or having 50 voters, it's, it's not right. The law, I think section 24 of the electoral 2022, says you should distribute mm. voters to their respective polling unit. So in the last area council election, if you are familiar with it, mm. in the last, on February 12th, there are over, I think over 900 or there about polling units where they said no there, there are either no voter or the voters are between 1 and 50. Meanwhile, the average number of voters per polling unit should have been between 300 and 500 maximum. Mm. So you now have about 3,000, 5,000 in some polling unit, and one or five or ten in another. in another. And the irony of it, my brother and sister, mm. the irony of it is that this polling unit may be side by side. Mm. Yes. So you have, you know, like in some B schools, mm. where INEC may have up to four polling mm. units. So you will now have a very huge crowd on one hand. By the side, you see people, the polling poll officials are just picking their teeth and, and this thing. <laughs> so people will be saying, but ah, these people are not doing anything. Yes. They will not know that the problem is from the commission in the sense that they didn't do proper redistribution to be sure that there is no lopsidedness. Mm. And that is why the law, and I actually requested that of our federal lawmaker, mm. to say that give us power to do this. So INEC did not use that power until now. Mm. They were presuming that registrants would determine where they want to vote. So even if you register and will say, you may say you want to vote in Kubwa. Mm. Do you get it? Yeah. Mm. So then that means the commission will not take you to Kubwa. But people are not doing that much. They are not as sophisticated as to know where exactly in Kubwa. Because Kuba is also a very a huge, huge community. A community settlement. So if, if they now take, you, you are living in the Arab Road, mm. and they take you to Tuwa, mm. <laughs> so but, you will still have an issue. True. But so people do not know exactly which polling unit is closest to them. Mm. And that's where INEC ought to have come in, not to even give the people that discretion, mm. but to look at where they feel that they are residential area. Because it is your residence that should determine where you vote. Mm. You know why? On the day of election, there will be no lockdown. There will be, there will be no movement. Mm. So even if you register closest to your office, office. you will not be able to come to from your home to that place to, to vote. So all of this needs a bit of methodical planning. Mm. And really? we have not seen that. Mm. So I will still hold INEC culpable. Mm. for this invalid registration that mm. there was no sufficient voter okay. education okay. around it. They, were, they are doing, I know they have a couple of programs running on some of the network stations, Radio Nigeria, NTA, but it's not enough. Mm. Not everybody watches those, uh, channels. those channels. Talking about not being enough, I have two questions in one. Uh, the first one is, what can we do to salvage this one million? Especially giving you explanations that some of the things that may have happened may not have been a deliberate attempt mm -hmm. to, you know, to budge the process. I would think that in this age of technology, as we see with the telcos, as we saw with the NDDC with contact tracing, that 
they would have left up to their contact so that they are able to receive messages to say you have incomplete registration. Exactly. You can show up at ABC or XYZ and have it validated. That's on the one hand. The second part of my question is, you've been around the world. Don't you think it's about time that we remove this whole mandate of a voter's card and basically just integrate this into our national identity system such that we have something that basically allows you to walk into a polling booth and vote. And it means you cannot walk into another polling booth anywhere in this world to express another vote. As we have seen in other parts of we don't see this whole idea of voter's card, let's say, for instance, in the UK. And we pride ourselves as people who are doing very well with technology. Is it difficult to synchronize our national identity so that with just one identity card, you can do all of these things and we will not be doing this fort and back and uh, continuous voters registration, which we seem to take so much away from paying attention to the actual planning. My brother, election. you are very spot on. Very, very on point. I was in, <clears throat> I was in Egypt in 2014, the first election that brought General Assisi into power uh, on the auspices of uh, African Union to observe the election. And one of the takeaways, which I wrote about in my column in The Punch uh, when I came back, was that Egypt does not have a national, it does not have permanent voters' card. They don't. They use their national, identi uh, national uh, identity, um, is it a national ID card that they get from yeah, NIN. Yeah. So what they do simply is that once you turn 18, you are flagged as qualify to vote. So that same card you have from birth is what you take to go and vote. So, and that was the intentment way back under Obasanjo. If you go and read the text, uh, when Nipsey, I think it used to be NCDR or something, when Nipsey was initially uh, established, it was meant to serve multiple purpose, inclusive of being a voter's card under late Sonde Afolabi mm -hmm. as Minister of Interior. That argument was put forward that we should have a multi-purpose national ID card. But politicians were trying to carve fiefdom for themselves. Say, ah, no, 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 no. Let's not do that. We are not ripe. You know, mm. the old argument, we are not right. Mm. When they say uh, electronic voting, we are not right. When they say electronic transfer, we are not, when will we be right? Mm. So, but it's all about cornering resources. Because of what essence is national ID card? I've been carrying one since 2002. Mm. Before they now invalidated it and said okay, I should come okay, and yeah, register yeah. again. We are the early birds. I was working and living in Lagos when, the, when I first did. And when I came to Abuja, I, I, we had something to do at the uh, uh, Nipsey headquarters then. And I asked one of the directors that I registered. He said, OK, I will help you get your permanent uh, and have it. But what, have I used it? For what purpose? I can't take it to the bank and the bank will accept it. I can't take it to, uh, to, to, to do my uh, uh, international passport. So. What, what, that is the end, that should have been our primary focus. Mm. That we should have a one Same card that serves multiple purposes, purposes, including voting. Mm -hmm. So that we don't, did you know how much INEC will have to spend on this did continuous you? voter registration? Because, again, back to what INEC has done. In June last year, I recall, INEC, was it last year or 2020? And they created the additional 57,000 polling units. Now, from 119,000, so now around 74 that we had up until last year, we now have 176,000. Mm. If I were to do this CVR at polling unit level, look at the manpower it will need. Mm. And all the staff of the commission will not be sufficient because the entire staff of the commission is about 65,000. Mm. From what I learned, the chairman himself told me, at one of the meetings, I asked, and said their total staff strength is about 65,000. Now they have 170, 
6,000 polling units, mm. which is why now what they are doing is that after the coming into force of uh, electoral 2022 on February 25, they now have to devolve to world level. Mm. But did you know how many words we have? 8,809 words. Mm. 8,809 words, and you need about three or four staff to man mm. each of those words. So you can see the number of manpower. And it's not everyone that works in NINEC that can do this registration. Sure. Because there are lawyers there, there are architects, there, are, there is a Department of Estates mm -hmm. and works in NINEC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will you mobilize such people to go and be doing registration? Mm -hmm. That's there true. are professionals, other professionals within the commission whose bit is not to go and be doing... Uh, it's only people in operations and maybe uh, voter registration, they have a voter registration department, they have operations department, yeah, they have uh, ICT department. Mm. Those are the relevant ones that you can mobilize to go and be doing. So you cannot just pick somebody from... Uh, finance and admin. Uh, God bless you. Finance and admin or account and say, or Savicom. Mm. Go and be doing registration. <laughs> the, the person will botch up, will botch the whole thing. Yeah. But we must also not forget something. INEC also alluded to fifth columnist within its own fold. Mm. In that statement, they said they are investigating some of their staff may have been complicit mm. in aiding and abetting this multiple registration. Right. Because the political elite in many communities will reach out to these young boys and say, come, 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 come. I want you to help me register these 500 people. Mm. And when you know that these people may have registered previously, but because of the field looker you are going to get, Maybe the guy is going to give you like 10,000 or mm, 50,000. Mm. You just register and say, now their own business mm. with that. Well, if they detect you, are not dead <laughs> out. <laughs> but you know, you, know what, you know what we do. So if you read that text, the commission is also alluding that they are trying to investigate some of their staff who may have compromised in ensuring. Because really speaking, you are very much on point, my brother, about the fact that when you do pre-registration online, your phone number is there. It's part of what you do pre-registration. Mm -hmm. What you are supposed to just go and do to complete your registration it's is capturing. your capturing of fingerprints and okay. facials. So if I have an incomplete registration, a responsible organization should be able to send me SMS or put a call through to say, Adia Zainab, we have your registration details. It's incomplete. Please come and come to so 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 place. They should direct you. But do you know it's not limited to INEC? Mm. I granted an interview to African News, a, a global media, mm. uh, in the course of the week. And what was the interview about? This uh, current ban on calls mm. by the uh, NCC. 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 Yes. Did you know that I have people who are close to me that the reason why they banned their course was because of incomplete registration. Mm. They have not completed the old, you know, registration okay. on okay. the okay. NIA. Mm. And the government had to wield that big stick by banning over 70 million people mm. from making calls. Mm. Should it have gotten to that level? Mm. In fact, one of the other people that were, that were interviewed in that, in that short um, uh, documentary was saying that it's my fault, oh, they sent me reminders, so I was yeah, told severally, but I was just <laughs> delayed. Yeah. So, so, so it's the nature and character of Nigeria mm. to have things delayed mm. and be lackadaisical mm. about things. Mm. And um, the implication is very grave True. because we are about recruiting over 11,000 political office holders mm. in 2023. Mm. And that's huge. That's huge. that's huge. So if you are not part of that, you don't have right to complain That's true. about bad governance. It's, um, <laughs> we, unfortunately, we'll have to cut him there to save him from himself because we understand, <laughs> we understand he has other pressing engagements yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, to, to attend to once he leaves uh, the Trust TV studio. But it has been a very enlightening and a very engaging session with uh, Jide Ojo, a public affairs analyst. We thank you once again for making that time to be here. Always a pleasure. I've forgotten your title again. I thought about the one. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the one. 